adjusting to this sort of setup. So let's say a drummer, he's only played acoustic drums or setup, and now he wants to get into the whole hybrid thing. Is it quite a major adjustment? Well, the the most important thing, you just, you don't become a hybrid drummer suddenly. Yeah. You know, it, it the most natural thing is to join a band where you need this. Yeah. And in, in modern music production, especially also in South Africa, mm. there's lots of electronic music, there's lots of acoustic ba- uh, uh, things, and then there's com. Yeah. And everything <laughs> meets in the middle. To make the people dance with specific songs, you need to trigger some of those produced songs. And true. you can put your acoustic drums on the stage and at the same time make it sound like the actual recording. It's crazy. And it will so bring crazy. you more work. Yeah. So it's it's a matter of, of what you want to do. Do you want to play in a hip hop band? Mm. Well, or do you want to play some trap music? Well, then you need to also respect the trap vibe, the exactly. trap sound. Yeah. Like Metallica respects the double kick of Lars Ulrich. You yes. know, it needs to be very kicky and they've been doing it for 25 years. So this is the same story. That's so awesome. And of course so you can it. you can say yeah to, today i will you know start being a hybrid drummer no first of all you have to play the music which actually needs this exactly yeah. Actually, it's a lot more to it in terms of not just putting on pads. And I mean, you got to get your samples right, learn how to yeah, use the right sounds. But that's sounds. not as difficult as it used to be because yeah. now you can just use this, and it goes into your backpack. Yes, you know, there nice. was a day where you needed a laptop and you needed a, a, a rack of, of of effects and samplers and so on. Yeah. Everything is in there. That's crazy. And you just, you know you have the musical director of the band or maybe even if you just play with the cover band now you can play the abba song with a dance bass drum and make the cover band sound like an amazing new thing exactly Almost so like in the stadium <laughs> so there's a reason to go hybrid but there's also a reason to really first be involved in some kind of musical environment mm. where you can actually need this and and, and which will you know, it will become addictive anyway. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It looks super fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, also very important, I'm still using analog symbols. Yes. So it's perfect to it, it, it it's perfect to combine acoustic elements and just add some electronics. And the electronic and symbols? No. Do you, do you enjoy that or absolutely the... when when I play with the V drums on stage, which yes, I of course, yeah. do more than this, uh, I always use the V symbols. Okay. I never combined any of my uh, electronic drums, purely electronic drums on stage with acoustic symbols. Okay. Yeah. Even up with that sense, sky, yeah. it's always been uh, the V symbols. Okay, awesome. I like the sound. So going back to your involvement with Roland, yeah, you mentioned earlier in the session that you actually get to try out a lot of stuff that's not released yet. Do you also have involvement in terms of you know testing new products or having input in new products? Well, this out? is a good example. The SPDSX is also a good example. Um, I was quite involved in the development of um, TD9, 
the oh, good wow. old model. Yeah. Um, I was very much involved in the SPDSX that's already uh, now seven years old already. Um, the TD20X, the TD30, um, a lot of the electronic bass drum sounds are actually me and a Japanese engineer trying wow. to anticipate on what was coming. Yes. Um, in the TD50 and also the TM6 Pro, uh, I have a bunch of um, really produced sounds in my studio that are presets in the TM6 Pro. So you've actually made sounds yes. for the module. Yes. So for Roland, I'm a sound consultant, sound designer, but I'm also like a, a usage consultant, so development consultant. So let's say, let's say uh, how the user interface, how it should, uh, you know, how the function should be. Uh, but the Japanese engineers develop everything, yeah. and then we come in with the first dummy or the first uh, 0.5 version, yeah, yeah. and um, and get it ready to be 1.0. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a really it's been a really long uh, adventure already, mm, and sure. um, um, I I'm fortunate that I'm also an active player on stage yeah, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to console them in the way I do That's so very true. Uh, yeah it's it's important to make this I mean, you know today it's important because people expect a lot mm. it's also you pay money for it so it should be switch on play PA That's, That's how it should nice be and simple. Yeah, yeah yeah That's awesome can get pretty pricey I'm sure obviously with the SPDXs and all that where would you start so for a drummer that's never played around with electronics and I said okay I want to get into it where would they start so it's cost effective I would start with a kick trigger and a snare trigger or just a kick trigger and one pad and a TM2 okay that's awesome a very simple thing just master out it's a small hybrid uh, trigger module mm. it's the smaller version of this one it's been out for quite some years but it has one big advantage uh, you can put samples on an SD card, you can put it inside the TM2, and you can already play the original produced drum sounds of the band you're playing with, for instance. So it's a, it's a very low-cost starting point. Yes. But it needs to be Roland module. Okay. Because the processing in the Roland modules is faster than the competitions. Oh, wow. So that's also the reason why it's a little bit more expensive. Yes. You actually pay for the faster processor. And there's one important thing uh, drummers sometimes forget, no latency. Yeah, that's a big one, yeah. So, so if you play, for instance, drum and bass, and you're playing with a great sound module and everything, but it doesn't have fast processing, you know, your, your triggered hybrid samples will be dragging, and you will sound like a flammy drummer in a PA system. You and the, the sound engineer <laughs> will harass you. Yeah. And you say, yeah, you know, and so that's that already brings some frustration and then maybe it puts people off no more hybrid. So very cost effectively, two triggers or one trigger and a pad, two inputs, two outputs, done. I suppose there you can add on quite easily. Yeah, you can add on, you can go to a bigger module, you can score a world hit song and then you'll have a drum tech setting it up for you. There we go. But I set up myself. <laughs> have or do you know any good resources for 
you know, video resources or lessons where a drummer can check out on YouTube. Do you have a platform yourself where guys? Oh uh, yeah, can... I have a YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, and I sometimes post really insights as well. Great. Uh, I should be a little bit more active because I've been very active on Instagram lately. But there's one thing for sure. I and I asked this also to the to the public in uh, in uh, in uh, uh, at my clinics. I ask always ask how many of you are on social media and of course there will be 80% of the people sticking up their hands but yeah. there's still some drummers out there that are against social media mm, big time, but yeah. they are forgetting one thing the best drum school today is Instagram exactly that there's fills of the day there's beats of the day there's sound of the day and then on YouTube you can, what I do is I post something on Instagram, which lasts 60 seconds, and I will post the exact same thing on YouTube, because on YouTube you have better audio quality and all your things will be in stereo. So yes. that's your, your main quality audio. And Instagram is just on your phone. And still you can put your phone there and just copy that fill. And then you can go to YouTube or to a website to download the PDF with the exercises. It's, a, it's, it's for free. It's insane. And it's, it's for free. Insane. And, and uh, you know, it's the new way of learning how to play drums or at least get inspired. You know, they used to be they where we were buying DVDs <laughs> for lots of money. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> I still have DVDs and VHS yeah. even. Wow. I, yeah, like I remember DVD. those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, you know, it's amazing what's happening. And yeah. you see it at the young drummers, those young 10, 11 year olds that, you know, have V drums at home and they play along to the metronome and to the it's MP3s insane. in there. They are so tight drummers, so much better than we were exactly. at our age. Because of the resource, yeah. Yeah, because of, so it's, it's very obvious. Online drum magazines, online content. That's it. Forget about print, forget about buying CDs, forget about uh, you know, um, and of course, I'm a little bit old school and people harass me for ah, why do you say forget about buying CDs? Because, you know, it's no exactly. use to buy a CD and only play that one track you like. Correct, you yeah. know, just get your Spotify playlists going. Of course, it's not WAF uh, quality, it's yeah. MP3s, but at least you're playing more. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So finishing off. Yeah. What advice do you have for, not just in terms of hybrid drumming, but just drumming in general for up and coming drummers? And like you say, with social media as well, it's so important. And you yeah. mentioned that a lot of guys miss it out, which is a big thing. So in terms of, you know, progressing as a drummer or getting into the scene as a drummer, being versatile, getting your social media pages going, all of that stuff that kind of runs the whole package off as a drummer. What advice do you have for One thing, this? play with the band. There we go. As much as you can. Because you can be a solo drummer and you can be a social media drummer, but if you don't play with the band, you're missing out. Maybe there. Yeah. And if you play with the band and then get the rest going, that's a win-win situation. But there's lots of online drummers that unfortunately, for instance, due to distances or whatever, are not able to play along with other musicians. Yeah, yeah. But that's still the most important thing to really learn the craft the craft. Instead of learning how to play drums learn how to play music yes, that's not that's something you cannot learn online very true everybody can play a paradiddle but it might be that a paradiddle that you you like you can play at 200 bpm it might be that it you're never going to use it in a band situation yeah and that's also something you need to learn exactly yeah that's amazing yeah awesome thank you so much for coming through enjoy your clinic tonight absolutely we'll there with the uh, you're on the guest list by the way i am yeah, so you'd better show up. I'll be there. Because Promise. there's only five people coming otherwise. So Okay, so I'm fine. No, there's more. There's more. <laughs> there's more. Thanks, and good awesome. luck with uh, with uh, SA Drummer. Awesome. Thank Not you Sad so Drummer. No, <laughs> all international guys are going to do that. Yeah, Don't uh, do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm subscribing. I'd love you to. Yeah. Thank How much so is much. it? It's free. I'm subscribing.